Hey guys, so this will be a small video where we discuss what are the components of an HTTP request and what is the REST protocol. So let me quickly pull up an example for you firsthand. So this is a sample HTTP request. So when we send an HTTP request to a host, it gives us a HTTP response. So let us dissect what are the various components of this HTTP request. Okay. So the first component right here is the HTTP method. So the method represents the, the verb, basically the, the action that we want to perform on the web server. Suppose we just want to get some data. The verb we are going to use or the method we are going to use is get. Suppose we want to add some data in in the in the web uh, in the database say for example if we want to update some data we will use the method post and if we want to delete some data from from the db uh, or we can say we want to delete a particular resource we will use the delete method so get is for getting a resource post is for posting uh, or adding a resource put is for updating a resource and delete is for deleting a particular resource. As we can see here, in this case, we are getting a particular resource. The next component is the host. The host is essentially the web server to which our request is going. In this case, the host is some website in India. And this part right here is the query string. After the host, we come to the path or the URL or the resource that we are requesting. And in this case, it is this slash page dot HTML. After path, we will be having um, the protocol or the HTTP version protocol or HTTP version which tells us which version of HTTP we are using and in this case we are using the HTTP version 1.0 apart from that we have some optional components which are Firstly, headers. So headers are used to pass on extra information along with the request. For example, accept language as English of the US. Accept encoding as gzip, deflate, connection, keep alive. Apart from this, we have the query string. Query string is generally used to pass on the get parameters in the request and apart from that, we may have the request body. Again, this is used to pass parameters to the server. So essentially, this is the dissection of an HTTP request. Now, let me quickly clear this and let us talk about REST. So what is REST? REST stands for representational state transfer this term was defined by roy fielding in his 2000 in the year 2000 in his doctoral dissertation so um, essentially think uh, of a web application like how how does a web application essentially uh, work a well structured web application essentially a good web application can be considered to be a state machine and in this state machine the user might be navigating by say using a, a, a particular resource identifier in in this case article number 21 and 
okay so this is the identifier and then there may be some action on this resource say get and uh, or maybe a post and using this action the user goes to his next state or the next representation of the resource thus the representational state of the resource is always being transferred to the the client who is making the request and therefore this protocol is called representational state transfer so much for oversimplification now we have the six constraints which uh, qualify a system to be restful architecture of this the first one is client server architecture so uh, this is pretty easy all of you would be having idea of what is a client server architecture so essentially there is a client uh, who is making requests to the server and the server is fulfilling the request of the client okay uh, next thing is that it should be completely stateless which means that um, you know the communication between the client and the server uh, should always contain all of the information that is needed to perform the request there is like no no session state in the server and uh, like it is entirely in the client's client side okay uh, the the uh, essentially what it means is that um, uh, one when when you send a request that request should should contain all the data that that we need uh, to fulfill that request there shouldn't be the server shouldn't come back asking hey uh, you know to fulfill your last request give me so and so data more so that that is not rest again uh, uh, we have the property of cacheable uh, so what is cacheable is that uh, at any stage uh, say the client the proxy or the server or at any stage the data should be able we we, sh we should have the facility to cache the data it is not necessary it will be necessarily implemented but we should have the facility we have a layered structure next that means the communication takes place a, in the form of layers say client talks to proxy which talks to server which talks to db and so on so client only knows that if i want to fulfill a request of mine i need to talk to this proxy proxy knows if i want to request uh, fulfill this request of the client i need to talk to the server and so on uh, so client does not directly talk to the db db does not directly talk to the client and so on then the next thing is code on demand in which the server can return some code to the client to fulfill some action and an example can be returning javascript and the last one is uniform interface uniform interface um, uh, on a high level it just means that uh, data is structured data has some structure that is essentially it so most of what i have written here i'll be writing down repeating in the description below uh, if you have found this video helpful, please give it a big thumbs up and if you find my content helpful, please subscribe to my channel and I'll be making many more educational videos for all of you. Thank you.